everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Camilla Clegghorn. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Z Garcia. And today we're talking about The Spill, a cooperative game about cleaning up the, the spill. The spill. The mm. oil so spill. It's the cleanup. I think the spill is actually a good name. It is a good the cleanup, name. Yeah, yeah. The cleanup might be like, I don't know what's like, that going to no, be about. Sounds like work. work yeah. Yeah. It shows like a kitchen sink. You're like, right. oh my gosh, I would hate that game. <laughs> so in this game, you are rescuing animals mm -hmm. who are getting caught up in the oil, and then you are also cleaning up the oil. It is a straightforward cooperative game, but the catch is it comes with a dice tower. Mm. Show us how it works. All right, so I've taken care of most of the setup here, but there are a couple things that are gonna vary from game to game that I wanted to show you. These tokens I've placed out here, you can see they are pre-printed on the board and they all start on the healthy side. You have your dice bag here, which has the weather die and all of your oil dice in it as well, minus eight of the oil dice specifically. So the rest of the bag you'll set aside. You take the eight and you drop them into the tower to set your Set your quadrants up. Then you'll look through each one and you'll take the die out and place it as it is noted in the very topmost position. So like this. This quadrant is going to get wrecked. If any of the dice would be, have been the same, for example, had this been a two, then you would have re-rolled the dice and die until you get somewhere it can go. And then number five over here. So now that the board is set up and ready, let's turn over to the players. Every game has to have four players in, um, in it, so you will choose four of them for this game. We'll just do these four here and return the rest to the box. And just for table space here, I'll only keep one out, but just note that each game does have to have four in it. For each player, then you will take a die, we'll take it out of the bag for now, and roll it for the quadrant to see where it starts. So for example, our brown player here would start in number one, and you'll do this for all of the, all of the players. So just for sake of this, we will just assume it looks something like this. Ship is upside down. There we go. And then each player will also take a token for each of their weather die specifics up here and place that on the board, sorry, inactive side. The last thing we'll do is set our wind conditions. These are noted by the difficulty in the top left corner. So you would choose your difficulty, then randomly select one of those and it will tell you how you're gonna win the game. And then you'll also select some of the resource cards here, which you can shuffle up. And again, you choose three of them. There's also a drafting um, kind of mechanism that it goes over in the rule book if you'd rather that. But for here, we'll just put these three random ones out. And with that, we are ready to play. So the game is gonna be played over multiple rounds until we either win or lose. We will lose if we ever have six spill outs out on the board at the end of the active player's turn. If one of our sick bays over here has six different animals in it, or if the sick bay holds three of the same kind of animal. If any one of those things happens at the end of the active player's turn, then you have lost the game. However, if you've not, and you've met all three of your win conditions, then you would win the game. The win conditions are gonna be a little bit uh, variable, game to game. Uh, so this one, for example, is save two contaminated marine animals removed a total of 10 oil dice from the, from the game and saved three full sets of marine life, most of which is gonna be tracked up here on this board. So let's go over a player turn to see how we would meet these conditions. The first thing you're gonna do on your turn is look at the oil spill up here and see where the current level and threat is. Take that many dice out of the bag and you will put it in the tower. So it'll be something like this. Anytime you have a die or an oil spill here into a, a section here with an animal, that animal becomes contaminated. If it is not saved this round, it will go to the sick bay. In the bag, there are also four weather dice. If any of them come out, you would roll it, but rather than actually placing it out on the board, you would see the symbol and activate that special power on your player board. So for example, here, we would have this action for one time use. So every player would flip that over. At the end of their turn, they would make it inactive. Then we get to the player's action phase. You have four action points total to use, and you can do a couple different things with that. You can use one action point to move up to two spaces away, so one or two spaces. You can use one action to remove an oil die and put it back, dice and put it back in the bag. 
You can do it to spend one action point to rescue a healthy animal. So you would take it off and you would put it up here in the rescued marine life. You can spend two action points though to rescue a contaminated animal. So then I could take this one and put it up here for two action points, which is what goes to this win condition down here. The other thing you can do is you can spend three of your action points to take one of the oil, oil dies completely out of the game. Again, one of the end game conditions here is to remove these from the game. They do not go into the bag. Another way to win is completely deplete the bag of dice. So that kind of, um, you know, will go into that as well. They don't have to be removed from the game, but all be out on the board or removed from the game without meeting a losing condition is another way to win. When you remove these from the game, you'll place them up here. And if you ever complete a whole column here, then you get one of these, you know, these orange resource cubes, which you can place here on these cards in order to gain a one-time special ability throughout the game. So you would place it the top is usually a weaker action. The bottom is usually usually are stronger and you do have to choose where to put it. Once it's placed, it cannot move. And then when a player decides to use that, they would remove that and the card from the game and replace it with another one. So like I said, you have four action points. You do, you can kind of mitigate that a little bit though up here in the extra action dice pool. So if there's something you really want to do, you can choose to take up to two dice and bank them for the next turn in order to get additional actions. So one additional action or two additional actions. The next person's turn, they would roll this many dice plus these two dice. So for example, if this was the end of the turn, uh, we see if we met the win conditions, we go into the next one. And if not, then we would take these two dice and the three dice that are have to be rolled and we would do this again. So you can extend your actions, but the next person has to kind of take that penalty almost and more oil is coming out. At the end of your turn, you will need to do the cleanup. Any sick animals that were not rescued would need to go to the sick bay. And again, that is a losing condition, having either three of one type or all one of each of the six different types. You would add any cubes you earned to the, to the goals down here, as well as add, add a cube up here if you have met a win condition to kind of check it off. You check to see if you won or lost. If you haven't, it goes to the next person's turn. As I said before, if you ever add three of these oil dice to the same little quadrant here, then you would also add a spill out down here. If you ever remove one of those, that spill out is removed. And again, six of those will lose you the game. If you ever have to play place a fourth in one of these sectors, it goes to the next available space in the next one again contaminating the animal. This goes clockwise, can be mitigated by some special powers on the individual players as they are just a little bit asymmetric. So for example, here our risk engineer during the spill phase drops one less oil than required. During an overflow, which would spill out, he can choose which way that goes. So most people go clockwise, he can kind of choose. This one, you can rescue animals that are on sectors adjacent to yours. So from here, I could rescue this turtle as well. Once per turn, you can push back an oil die for free by moving into its sector. So just by movement, you know, you can remove an oil die. So a little bit of uh, special player powers as well for each character. And again, they each have these, these weather die effects up here that are going to affect your turn. They're each negative, except for this last one, which is a bonus action, but the rest are negative. So for this one, you have one less movement on your turn. On this one here, it costs one additional in order to rescue animals. Uh, you can't use your special power. And then this one here, resource cards cannot be used on a specialist turn, so you can't use these turns. So it's a little bit limiting for one time each time that the weather die comes out. There are four in the bag. When they are resolved, they are removed from the game. So it's only four times the game to keep in mind. And that is a brief overview of the spill. Let's head, head back up and hear our thoughts. You know, after playing so many <laughs> difficult to grok, yeah. cooperative games. Yeah. And I know that some people love them. You know, there's the whole Spirit Island, you know, but that... I've heard of that, yeah. Mm. But that genre, people are like, oh, well, in this cooperative game, there's 80 pages of rules. And right. stuff. Sometimes it's nice to come to one that's just very, very straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. And I would right. say this one's really easy to understand. I think it has some... I think the cards and how the cards work, like you need to get a cube, and then you put the cube near on the card, right. and then you can activate the card. I feel like that is just slightly less fulfilling than this is going to be compared to pandemic a lot. Yes. yes. You know, okay. drawing sure. those one quiet night, the cards from pandemic. Right. They're easy. You get one of those special yeah. cards, you play it. Here it felt a little bit that part felt a little 
Less than elegant, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I was gonna say kind of tacked on because I mean you get the cubes as you fulfill that one objective, and it was like, oh, but what do we have them do with the cubes? So to me, I felt like that whole mechanism was kind of like the oh, they need something to do with the cubes here. Put this in there. You know, I want to say that was the most underwhelming part to me because it did feel a little out of out of rhythm. My guess is that they were maybe going for a little bit more player agency because you pick those cards basically as a team. You have a, you know, what do you have, two you that you get and you choose one. But that's after you know what the win conditions are. So right. I think the idea mm. is let's try to get cards, resource cards that synchronize with our win conditions. Mm -hmm. Got it. Maybe it's a little bit more agency, but I agree that you're losing some elegance mm -hmm. uh, to pay for that. What do you think about the win conditions? Because basically they're it's like a <laughs> dial they turn. This sure. one goes down, this right. one goes up. You yeah. need to take out 10 oil or 8, but then you need to rescue more animals. I thought that was interesting because I don't think it really changes the gameplay that much. You know, because like you said, it really is just kind of a little more tweak on the win conditions. But I think what it does is if, is if you're playing this and there is one thing that you really enjoy doing, I really like saving the animals, or I really like removing the oil huh. from the, removing the dice in the back, I think yeah. it gives you a little bit of agency in that more than changing the gameplay um, or directing strategy. It kind of just lets you explore what you like a little bit more. It's one of my favorite elements of the game because one of the knocks I have on the game is that I don't feel like it has a lot of dynamism. It's not a very dynamic game. You have a static setup. Every game, you're starting with the same animals in the same places. The dice are different. The dice are different, sure. sure. And that's going to be your yeah. main random you know, number gen. That's going to be the randomness in the game. But the, having those different win conditions, I feel like, will make games feel a little bit more different from one to the next. Because otherwise, you're really doing the same puzzle game to game. Again, with a static setup. You know what I mean? I think that's what adds most of it. Of course, the player powers will be a little bit there, too. So... Yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I find those, uh, any game that does that whole, it's this much of A and this much of B, and if we pull away from this one, we just add to the other one. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Ticket to Ride Rails and Sails did that. At the beginning of the game, you decide how many trains you get, how many ships you get. Yeah, you're you right. decide, you know, mm -hmm. which one. Oh, look at that, you made the wrong choice. <laughs> or, I don't know, it feels not the most inspired to say... Look, it's different. It's not different. It's two less oil and two more animals. Yeah, that could be the game every time, and I would never think to myself, I'm so glad they picked this, because it's so different. <laughs> um, so, I don't know. That feels a little artificial. It's also so simple. It super sure. doesn't matter. Sure. It's not like I'm thinking, I wish they would have cut that, because it's just an extra complication. It's not. It's, it's, it's nothing. Mm -hmm. Now, the main thing that's going to make people play this game is that tower. Yes. Sure. Right? The whole thing of dropping dice in, seeing them come out in quadrants. <clears throat> this is the same device when I was a kid at the park, you threw a ball up in a thing yeah, and it would come out of one of those right. oh, one of those shoots. Yeah. I always thought those were like amazing. Wow. Like oh, is it gonna come out on my side? Right. It's yeah. such a dumb thing, but I like it. <laughs> yes. Um this does that same thing. Mm -hmm. Um what did you all think about that? That's great. It's I mean fun. That, that's fun. Yeah, yeah. that's it, it, this game would not Survive without that, I right. feel. I agree. And I think it also, the rest of it doesn't isn't enough right. new. Yeah, and, and it also has a nice thematic connection, right? I mean, it's an oil derrick, and it makes sense. The oil is spilling out of this thing, and you're trying to kind of deal with this. It, yeah. yeah, so I think it's a smart thematic connection. It's a smart component decision. It's going to be, you know, something that calls people's attention. Right. And you're right, that's the yeah. hook. That is the hook. The hook. And there's I definitely agree. that moment every time you put those dice in there, you're like, oh, please not a five, please not a five in this quadrant or mm -hmm. here. You know what I mean? There is that little bit of like angst or breath holding, you know, as as you put them in there each time, which I think gives um, just some life to the game, you yeah, know, yeah. as you kind of go through that gambit of emotions like, oh, okay, we survived. Okay, now how can we make this work? You know, and then just yeah. getting that, that tension kind of builds as you go to put the, the next set in as the next person's turn. So I think it brings a good um, element to the game, which is that... Um, luck, I guess, you know, mm -hmm. angst, I guess. Yeah, I did have a small issue component-wise with, if you put the dice in, in a, just at once, if you drop them at once, they will sometimes get stuck. In the in that little oh, okay. the, in the little thing, you hit there. the table like this. Boom. You oh, do, yeah. I mean, table. it's it's not a huge issue, but I didn't want to mention it that it's that it's uh, it, you know it is something. And then we haven't really talked much about components other otherwise too. But I did feel like the setup was a little bit more of a bear than I would want it to be for mm. this one. Um, there, there's a it's not a long game by any means, and the setup seemed a little bit tedious to me. Um, we talked in a recent mm. review about this whole. Uh, concept of do you start with tokens on your board 
or not. And in a different game, it worked for me. In this one, it didn't work for me, where you've got those little things that can happen with the weather dice, right? And you put these tokens on your board. And if that weather die comes in, you flip that token to remind everybody that... I like that idea, but you're right. You don't use it yeah, every game. You don't use oh, it very much right. at all. And honestly, what, if times? you can't remember for one round one of these effects, I don't know. It seemed, it seemed unnecessary to me. I also right. wonder if it would be a big deal if you, when you put the animals out, that you just, they said, one animal here, two animals here, and I just was like, put them out. I guess you could have a clumping of one type of animal. And that's what but, it is, because one of the losing right. conditions is, you know, three of the same animal, you know what I mean, in the sick bay. Or yeah, but I wonder, each. though, then you could then concentrate on, let's save that sure. section of the board. I don't know. Right. I'm just guessing. But mm. I think, like I said at the beginning, I think that there's so many complicated Euro game, uh, cooperative mm -hmm. games out there right yeah. now. Yeah. Complicated, hard cooperative yes. games. That's kind of the norm. The easy ones, there's not many. They're mostly being made by Funko, you know, with their thematic cooperative right. games. Right. There's not many other ones out there. I like that this exists for that reason. I think it's a fairly easy to understand theme. Mm -hmm. Everyone's gonna be, you know, oh yes. yeah, we're all saving animals. Great. It's easy to understand the actions that you have on your turn. Mm -hmm. It offers a really fun mechanism of I want one more action at the cost of you rolling more dice. That I works that really well. I love that, that was smart. I like that a lot. And that tower is going to appeal to a lot of people. So I'm glad it exists. I had fun playing it. It's not as good as Pandemic, probably. People are going to compare it to a lot because they have a similar feel. But I, don't, I think that's okay. I think sometimes you want to play a different theme, a different thing. So for me, I'm giving it a 7. I enjoyed it. It's fun. And I think it's a great... Intro is a strong word, but it's almost there like, hey, you want to play a cooperative game to people who've never played one? This is a good first it's, one to play. It's yeah. not far above something like Forbidden Desert or, right. you know, so I think it is yeah. in that. That's, yeah. I think it is in yes. that weight. What'd you think? Uh, I think if you'd asked me five years ago, I would have come in quite a bit higher. I'm giving it a six. And part of it is because I feel like it's not doing a whole lot in this space of the cooperative, kind of base level cooperative game. I would have said theme. But you've got Endangered out there, which I feel like is in a similar kind of a feel of saving animals, cooperative game. I just feel like this lacks in innovation. It's fun. I, I would never turn down a game of it, but I'm not going to suggest it. I think that there are other games, even in this weight, that I would suggest first. It just doesn't feel like it's bringing enough new to the table right now to go higher than a six. A good game with some solid foundations, but not quite at the recommendation level for me. Mm -hmm. What about you? I'm giving it the same thing. I'm also giving it a six. I think it has one really cool hook with that tower. Mm -hmm. It's a fast randomizer, having to roll the dice outside and then roll for which quadrant would be a pain. Yeah. This is beautiful. It just drop them in there, boom, randomization done. I really like that. I think it's a great uh, visual hook and that just game aid. And the rest of the game just kind of feels uninspired by the numbers maybe um which is fine and again works it's serviceable it's sort of the word that keeps coming to mind this is the rest of this is serviceable it, it, it works okay mm -hmm. the tower really is the main hook and then it has a neat theme um i enjoy it i would also not turn down a game of this i think if somebody really wanted to try this i'd say sure mm -hmm. you know it's quick it's a neat idea works well enough it's just not inspiring. I, I don't sort of get into it. I At no point am I going, do I feel the tension I feel in other co-op games where I'm thinking oh, if this happens over here then this is gonna, I'm like just, oh, oh that's bad. <laughs> oh, oh, we're getting close to losing. Okay, you know, so yeah. it's missing some juice for me. I'm coming in right at a seven with you, Tom. Um, I, I kind of agree, I agree that there's not a lot of um, innovative, you know, kind of mechanisms here or anything, but I think what it really does well is it kind of gives you a journey, you know, each turn. You really do feel that highs of like, you know, as you're dropping in the dice and the angst and then kind of stepping back and kind of puzzling out your turn. And then again, going into the next one, a little bit of maybe pushing the luck there of, do I take the additional, I love that mechanism of, do I take the additional actions and dice, which mm -hmm. is gonna make it harder for the next person. I really like that push. It, I think it kind of drives that cooperative nature where you have to think ahead together. Um, and so I think it, it does do some, I really like kind of that emotional journey of it, but I do agree there's nothing a whole lot new about it necessarily and so it would be hard for me to recommend it over some other games out there um, so yeah I definitely enjoyed it would not turn it to ga game down of it would be close to recommending it but not quite um, on a general blanket 
All right. Well, I would. Anyway, that's <laughs> The Spill. Mm -hmm. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Camilla Clegghorn. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Z Garcia. Have fun saving animals. Do it. Save the animals. That's good. Mm.